Welcome to part two of the rhythmic evaluation of the jig cork hill. And if you haven't seen part one, you're going to want to go ahead and, and play that video first, or at least have, have done it first, because we talk about these blue highlighted outline um, phrases in that video. So um, please, you know, feel free to go back to that one. Um, but if you're in the right place, um, what you should be looking for or looking forward to learning is these phrases. These are the in-between phrases that I pointed out in the previous video where we have, for example, two triplets back to back in a bar. And then again, two triplets back to back. In that scenario, I wanted to just break down the rhythm of the second triplet in those bars. Previous video, we talked about the rhythm of the first triplet and how it relates to the next beat, which is this note, the beginning of the next triplet. And it's basically a one, two, three, little breath of space, and then the next beat. So the principle is exactly the same. It's gonna be one, two, three, next beat. And that breath I'm doing is to sort of represent this sort of breath of space that we have between the triplet and the next note. And it shows up in these orange, uh, outlined areas, and there aren't very many of them because we really covered most of them in the first video um, because they were in the first part of the bar. All right, so the very first one shows up where there's an overlap here. It shows up in part two, bar one, and we're going from high A, E, C, and then back up to high A, which is the beginning of the next beat. The whole point of this is to keep the rhythm of one, two, three, and then the space, and then the next note, one, two, three, a. One, two, three, A. In this case, A, E, C, A. All right, let's try this one. It might sound something like this. One, two. One, two. It's a break, a little breath. One, two, three, A. One, two. Right? We don't want it to blend all together. We want to have a little bit of space after the triplet. All right, that's the first one. The next one that shows up is right after it here, the transition, or excuse me, the second triplet in bar two. And it, we have a, um, or excuse me, the yeah, second triplet bar two. We have the A, uh, E, C, and then it's a G grace note to low A. So the rhythm's gonna be the same, and it's just going to be uh, one, two, three, low A. One, two, three, low A, like that. Okay, and anytime feel free to pause the video and do those triplets at your own pace. The internal speed of the triplet may not be as fast as mine are at the moment. Um, go ahead and work on that. It's the rhythm we're talking about. Let's look at the next one in, in uh, part two. This is high A, E, C, back up to high A. Well, that's the same as this. Okay, so we're not going to repeat that one. Let's look at the next one here. This is in the beginning of part three. And what we have here is a G grace note on E, C, C strike, and a G grace note up to F. So let's go ahead and practice that one. This should look very familiar, right? Because we see it up here in part one. The only difference is we're going to F in this one, okay? Let's try it. The rhythm's gonna be the same. Just to remind you of what this, this particular triplet sounds like, it's if you take a moment or two to get your bearings on that if you need to and we'll go ahead and do that phrase one two one two remember it's one two three f one two three breath f we're taking that breath ba 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 uh. one Right, that is that one. Um, here, the next one that we have is the same thing, except it's going down to low A, okay? Same thing as previously, but we're going down to low A. So, right there. Ba ba bum do. All right, let's try that. Nice and slowly at first here. I'll just model it. It'll be one, two. 
Right? One, two. A breath of space after the triplet. One, two, three, low A. One, two. Okay, let's go ahead and try the, uh, or take a look at the next one. And it's mighty similar, but we'll go ahead and, and play it. Here we go. We have a G grace note to E, C, strike on C, G grace note to E. I bet we did that up above, but we're going to do it again here. Ready? So we'll take a look at it. One, two, three, E, one, two. One, two. All right, let's take a look at part four, because that's where the last ones are. We have this one here, which is high A, C, strike to C, G grace note, up to E. And did we have that one before? I'm going to check and it looks like we have not. So that's great. We're gonna go ahead and do it. Here we go. High A, C, strike to C, G grace note to E. Same idea as before. Here's what it looks like mechanically. Let's try it. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Whoops. One, two. Sorry about that. All right. We have two more. Let's see if they're new. Here we go. We have the A. C going down to low A, all right? Over here, it was going up to E. Now it's going down to low A. So let's do this one. Mechanically, that one looks like. Take your time on these if you need to break them down on your own, but this is to give you an idea of the rhythm. One, two, three, note. One, two, three. Away, like that. Ready? One, two. One, two. One, two. All right. The last one is this. And we already did it over here. So there are no more um, triplet phrases. If you've done part one, did the video part one, plus this with the orange, video part one was the blue. If you've done all those and you've practiced those a bunch and you can play those rhythms consistently, you're ready to play Cork Hill as a tune, not just as a rhythmic exercise. So we'll check that out next.